Hello, ha uh, quarantine. Welcome to my blog. Okay, joke lang. So, I was asked to lecture to you the uh, chapter concerning business taxes, which will cover the business taxes in general as well as the VAT in general. But in this lecture, we'll also likewise cover uh, the administrative requirements for VAT because it will not be covered by any other lecture, as well as the generic concepts concerning excise taxes. All right? So, if you remember in your previous lessons, we have discussed already what we call transfer taxes. Transfer taxes are those which are imposed on gratuitous transfers of property, whether by death, in which case estate tax will be the one applicable, or donations inter vivos, in which case donor's tax will be the tax applicable. In this particular lecture, we will cover business taxes, which has been defined well, in the book of Sir Tabag, as those which are imposed on onerous transfers, you know, such as a sale, a barter, exchange, or importation, in contrast with transfer taxes that are imposed on gratuitous transfers of property. Nomenclature-wise, it is uh, called business taxes because, uh, as a rule, there must be a business that is, per that is pursued in the Philippines, well, except for importation, by the taxpayer before the business taxes can be made applicable. There are basically three types of uh, business taxes uh, that will be value added tax, the percentage taxes, as well as excise taxes. As we've mentioned earlier, we will only cover VAT in general in this particular lecture, as well as excise taxes. Other concepts concerning the VAT, as well as that of percentage taxes, will be covered by a different lecturer. Alright, so let's proceed. Now, this is generally the taxability applicable to transactions. The idea is that whenever there is a particular percentage tax that is already applicable on a transaction, let's say the receipts of a common carrier, which will be subject to the 3% common carrier's tax, then it is already considered as exempt from VAT under Section 109E of the tax code. As will be discussed to you in VAT exempt transactions, those services that are already subjected to percentage taxes will no longer be subject to the VAT. In general, however, the rule is that <clears throat> in general, the VAT will be applicable to any and all type of transaction except if there will be a particular exemption applicable to it, in which case it will no longer be subject to percentage taxes. You will note at this point that VAT and OPT are considered as mutually exclusive taxes because as a rule, if there is a particular percentage, percentage tax applicable to the transaction already, exempt na ito sa VAT. But in general, it will be subject to VAT unless there is a specific exemption provided, in which case, wala nang ini-impose na 3% OPT. Okay? However, there are specific exempt transactions that are exempted under Section 109. Section 109 of the tax code lists the VAT exempt transactions from subparagraph A up to subparagraph BB. No? But BB is the paragraph which we call the threshold provision, which exempts the particular taxpayer from paying the VAT only because its sales or receipts did not exceed 3 million pesos, which is the VAT threshold amount. So if a particular sale or receipt or an activity for that matter is already exempt under Section 109A or Section 109 or up to Section 109AA, then it is exempt not only from the VAT but also from the 3% percentage tax. So this in short, yung Section 109 will cover the VAT exempt transactions but are generally likewise exempt from the 3% OPT. No? So for example, if there is a sale of, let's say, uh, raw pork. No? So pork is considered as an agricultural food product and selling it raw is considered a sale on its original state which is specifically exempted under section 109a so since it is exempt from that the sales also will not be subject to 3% opt 
But if the ground for exemption is only because the sales or the receipts of a taxpayer did not exceed 3 million, it is exempt from VAT under uh, Section 109BB or the threshold provision, but it will still be subject to the 3% percentage tax. In short, if the only ground for exemption from VAT is because the total sales or receipts of a particular taxpayer did not exceed 3 million pesos, then masa subject pa rin sa 3% OPT, but it is exempt from VAT. Yeah. Take note, however, that while VAT and percentage taxes are considered as mutually exclusive taxes, yeah, excise tax is not uh, or there will be no exemption just because there is VAT and OPT already. No? As we will discuss later on, excise tax applicable on excisable articles, products, or non-essential services will actually form part of the taxable base in computing the VAT or the applicable percentage tax. Okay, so now let's go to the VAT in general. Okay, the specific topics on VAT, as we mentioned earlier, like VAT on sale or lease of goods or properties, VAT on importations, VAT on services, as well as input VAT will be discussed by a different or by another professor. Okay, so VAT by definition under the Consolidated VAT Regulations or RR16-05 is a tax on consumption. Okay, it is levied on every stage of the sale, barter, exchange, or lease of goods or properties and services in the Philippines and as well as on importation of goods into the Philippines. Okay, you will note that there are four different transactions subject to VAT by the very definition provided for by law or by the regulation. A sale, yeah, para meron tayo effect, effect. A barter, an exchange on the property, or the lease of goods. So, itong tatlong ito, magkakasama on disposal of the property, sale, barter, or exchange. Pangit. Dali lang. Dali natin. So, there are four particular transactions that will be sale of goods or properties, including barter or exchange thereof lease of goods or properties, service or rendering of service, and importations. These are the four general transactions that are subject to VAT in the entire tax code. Okay. Now, there are different characteristics of the VAT. No, as discussed in different or in numerous jurisprudence or Supreme Court decisions and by regulations of the BIR. So first is that it is considered an indirect tax. No? Okay. The idea is that, well, it was considered as indirect tax in the case of <clears throat> Seagate Technology, no? in, in which adopted the case of uh, Commissioner of Internal Revenue versus Mangsaysay Lines, which eventually described the VAT as a tax on consumption as well. No? So, the idea is that the burden of shouldering the VAT can be passed on by the seller to the buyer. Okay? The lessee or transferee of goods, properties, or services. Which means that even if the seller, the service provider, or the lessor, the one who records the revenue or the sales, remains to be the party liable to remit the VAT to the BIR or the statutory payer, the burden of shouldering the VAT is shifted to the buyer, the lessee, or the transferee. That's why we consider it as indirect because the statutory liability to pay for it will be on the seller or the one earning the income, while the burden of shouldering will be on the buyer. So, the idea is that, for example, ikaw ay bumili no, sa isang tindahan, yung tindahan na ito ang magbabayad ng VAT papunta kay BIR, pero pinagbayad kanya ng VAT. No? So, even if the seller remains to be the one statutorily liable to remit the amount of VAT collected from the buyer, the burden is now shifted to the buyer in paying that particular uh, tax. No? That's why it is considered as a tax on consumption as well because the idea is that it will be assessed on every stage or on every level of the transaction as well as on every stage of the supply or the 
production stage and it is ultimately the end consumer you know, or the end user of the goods or the services which will ultimately shoulder the tax that's why it was described as a tax on consumption okay. as a third characteristic which we've mentioned already earlier it is imposed on each stage of the production and distribution process and the VAT well before when the VAT law was introduced in the Philippines there were people who questioned the legality of the imposition of VAT on the ground that it violates the uh, fiscal adequacy requirement no, of a sound uh, you call this the uh, the principles of a sound tax system although the supreme court in that particular case described that the VAT actually assures the fiscal adequacy in uh, collecting an imposition of the VAT through the collection of the tax on every level of consumption so you will note here there are five particular stages in this example so meron kang supplier ng raw materials you have here the manufacturer na bumibili from the supplier and the manufacturer who eventually sells the goods to the wholesaler and the wholesaler who will sell the goods to the retailer and the retailer who will sell the goods to the final consumer okay you will note that the sale of the raw materials from the supplier to the manufacturer will be subject to VAT okay may VAT dia na impose dun sa selling price ni uh, supplier and uh, the sale of the manufacturer to the wholesaler will likewise be subject to the VAT as well and the sale of the wholesaler to the retailer will likewise be subject to VAT and the sale of the retailer to the final consumer will also be subject to VAT at every stage the VAT is imposed and the burden of shouldering the same will be on the buyers Okay, like here, si supplier ng raw materials, ipapas on niya kay manufacturer ang VAT. So, babayaran ni manufacturer yun kasama ng selling price. And the supplier of the raw materials will be the one to uh, remit the amount of VAT to the BIR. Pagbenta ni manufacturer kay wholesaler, ganun din ang mangyayari. But you will note that ultimately, it is the final consumer who will shoulder the burden of the VAT. Or ultimately, it will be upon the final consumer who will uh, upon which the burden of paying the VAT will rest. Okay. So, we've already mentioned that uh, the VAT is imposed on every stage of the transfer. Kaya this example natin kanina, no? may VAT yung sale from the supplier to the manufacturer, from the manufacturer to the wholesaler, then the wholesaler to the retailer. Nevertheless, okay, in our VAT system in the Philippines, we apply what we call the tax credit method. No? The idea here is that any input taxes or the VAT no, that you paid on the purchases by the buyer with regards to the sale can be used as a tax credit against the output tax or the VAT that will be applied on the sale made by that particular uh, taxpayer. So from our earlier example, the manufacturer who paid the VAT passed on by the supplier of raw materials, the VAT component of what he paid to the supplier will be used as input tax credit or input VAT you know, that can be used against his eventual output tax liability or the VAT that will be applied to his own sale when he sells the products or the goods uh, to the wholesaler and so on and so forth so the idea is that by applying the tax credit method which was discussed thoroughly by the Supreme Court in the case of Seagate technology if the output tax at the end of uh, the quarter turns out to be higher than the amount of input tax credits applicable on the purchases any excess will become the VAT payable for the quarter the amount that will be remitted by the taxpayer to the BIR. But if the output tax is less than the input tax on the purchases, then any excess input tax can be creditable to the following quarter. No? It's just that under our law, if the excess input tax, yung sobra no, ng input tax over the output tax, uh, if the input tax will relate to zero-rated transactions, which will be discussed to you by a different professor later on, the excess input tax 
can be creditable in the following quarter but it may also be claimed as a refund. So, nagkakaroon lang dito ng panibagong option. So, let's illustrate the tax credit method. Alright, so in this particular example, Mr. XYZ had sales amounting to 5 million pesos and purchases amounting to uh, 3 million pesos. So the question is how much will be the VAT payable if the amounts are exclusive of VAT? So since the amounts are already exclusive of VAT, we just multiply them by 12% to determine the output tax or the input tax. So the sales times 5 or the 5 million times the 12% VAT applicable rate will result in a 600,000 peso output tax. Now, that's why we mentioned that output tax will be the VAT applicable on the sales. But with regards to the purchases, 3 million, dahil exclusive din ito ng VAT times 12%, this will yield an input tax or input VAT amounting to 360,000 pesos. Applying the tax credit method, the input tax paid on the purchases or the VAT that is paid on the purchases can be claimed as a tax credit against the output tax liability. In which case, by the end of the quarter, ang babayaran lang ni Mr. XYZ to the BIR or ang iririmit na VAT kay BIR ay yung 240,000 difference or the excess of the output tax over the input uh, tax. No? Now, if it were the other way around, so for example, if the sales amounted to 5 million pesos but the purchases amounted to 6 million, no? in this case, there will be excess input tax kasi magiging 720 na. 720,000 na ang ating uh, input tax or the VAT on our purchases, pero 600,000 lang ang ating output tax or the VAT applicable to our sales. So the excess 120,000, as we've mentioned earlier, the excess of the input tax over the output tax can be carried over to the following quarter as a tax credit you know, to that particular quarter. But if the excess input tax will relate to zero rated sales, then it can be either carried over to the next quarter as a tax credit or a refund claim may be filed with the BIR. Now, who are the persons that may be liable to VAT? As we mentioned earlier, VAT is considered a business tax. That's why, as a rule, there must be a business in order to be liable for the VAT. No? So, this will be the persons who, in the course of trade or business, let me just emphasize on that, in the course of trade or business, there, okay, will be uh, engaged in the transactions that are subject to VAT, which we've mentioned earlier. No? So, this will be the sellers or the transferors, the lessors, and the service providers, or who, in the course of business, sells, barters, or exchanges properties, or lease goods or properties, or renders services. <clears throat> and also, those who import goods into the Philippines or what we call the importers. You will notice the difference from the earlier slide. Dito sa importation ng goods, hindi na nag apply yung rule na kailangan pang in the course of trade or business. You know? So as long as the goods are brought into the Philippines, whether or not it is uh, made in the course of trade or business, then it will be uh, subject to VAT. Okay. Now, <clears throat> take note, however, that profit is not a necessary element in order to be subjected to VAT. No? Although it is supposedly in the ordinary course of trade or business, profit is not a requirement in order to be liable for VAT. An interesting case here decided by the Supreme Court would be the case of Comacerco or the Commonwealth Management Services. Okay. In this particular case, Comacerco provided services including functioning as an internal auditor of Film Life, one of its uh, affiliate companies, at a reimbursement at cost basis. Which means if they incurred, say, 15 million in operational costs, this will be the same amount that they will bill Film Life. No? Kaya nga reimbursement at cost. Kung magano lang yun na incur nila na cost, yun lang din ang sinisingil nila from the affiliate company. Companies. No? That's why it will always result in a zero profit because the revenues will be always be equal to the costs that they incurred. But they were later on assessed by the BIR for deficiency VAT on such services. Sabi ng Comacerco, 
uh, since they earn no profit from the services and uh, since the revenues are always equal to the cost, then they should not be subject to VAT. And this was the decision of the Supreme Court. No? Sabi ng Korte, the VAT is a transaction tax. Thus, it does not follow. A transaction becomes exempt just because there is no profit derived therefrom. Profit would thus be immaterial in determining taxability as long as there is a sale, barter, or exchange, or importation, it will be subject to VAT regardless of any profit derived from such transaction. So, from that, we will note that as long as there are services performed or there is a sale, barter, exchange of goods or properties or importation, which are made well, for the first three transactions made in the ordinary course of trader business, whether or not there will be profit, the VAT will be applicable. Interestingly, however, no, in the case of Commissioner of Internal Revenue versus Sony Philippines Incorporated, in this case, Sony Philippines was assessed by the BIR for deficiency VAT kasi naka-receive sila ng subsidy coming from Sony Singapore in the form of a reimbursement and the uh, advertising expenses that they incurred. No? So, subsidy ito. So, on the strength of the Comacerco case, sabi ng BIR, nako, dapat subject din ito sa VAT. No? Sabi ng Supreme Court dito, wala namang sale, barter, or exchange or of goods or properties that the VAT may be levied on. No? Ang pinagkaiba nito with the earlier case of Comacerco, in Comacerco, there were actual services rendered although no profit was earned. No? In Sony Philippines' case, the money from SIS was a mere funding and not uh, as payment for services rendered by Sony Philippines or for goods purchased by Sony Singapore from Sony Philippines. So since there was no actual sale, barter, or exchange in uh, the subsidy or the uh, dole out of the money, then there is nothing no, to impose the VAT on. Kaya magkaiba ang naging decision dito. In short, as long as there is a sale, barter, exchange, or importation, there will be applicable VAT on it whether or not it results into a profit. No? With regards to the sale, lease, or uh, service rendered, it is not required that there must be profit as long as it is done in the ordinary course of trader business. But if there is no such sale, barter, or exchange, then there will be no VAT applicable. Kaya nga, nililimit lang natin into the four transactions ang, ang imposition natin ng uh, VAT. So, now, the rule on regularity, we've mentioned already earlier, is that uh, the idea is that the sale, barter, or exchange must be done in the ordinary course of trade or business in order for the VAT to apply. So, under this rule, a transaction will be subject to VAT if it is made in the ordinary course of trade or business. That's why, if a sale, barter, or exchange is not made in the ordinary course of trade or business, then it will not be subject to VAT. This was applied in the case of Magsaysay Lines. In this particular case, the transfer there was a transfer of the vessels coming from a government-owned corporation and it was transferred to Magsaysay Lines. And eventually, the BIR assessed uh, VAT on such particular transfer. Sabi dito ng Supreme Court, since the transfer of the vessels were uh, pursuant to a declared privatization policy of the government and cannot be regarded as made in the ordinary course of trader business, then walang applicable na VAT. Kasi unang-una, dapat it is done in the ordinary course of trade or business. Okay? Now, since this is a general rule, of, of course, there will be a particular exemption. So, ito yung decision ng Korte doon sa magsaysay lines that we mentioned earlier. Since the transfer of the vessels uh, were not done in the ordinary course of trader business but merely due to the privatization efforts of the government or a declared privatization policy, then it is not considered in the ordinary course of trader business. Walang mag-a-apply na VAT. Okay. Now, we mentioned earlier that the rule on regularity, however, is uh, subject to certain exceptions. Now, it will not be applicable to importations okay, as well as services which are rendered by uh, non-residents or lease no, of properties located in the Philippines, kahit pa non-resident ang income earner. 
Okay? Which means that even if the importation is for personal purposes and is not in any way business related, it will still be subject to VAT because the rule on regularity does not apply to it. Ganon din si non-resident. No? So, kunwari, itong si Taylor Swift ay singer abroad. So, ang kanyang trade or business ay singing. No? Then, she went to the Philippines and rendered services here. Let's say as a cashier. No? It will still be subject to VAT even if it is not in the trade or business or uh, in the regular trade or business of Taylor Swift, since there were services here that is rendered by a non-resident, it will be subject to that. Okay? Now, also, co also covered by the rule on regularity will be the transactions which are incidental to the ordinary course of trade or business. The idea is that the incidental transactions can still be subject to VAT even though they are not done in the ordinary course of trade or business. Let's take this for a particular example. So, for example, yan. Dahil tayo ay mga nasa quarantine ngayon, so beer na beer na ako incorporated a VAT registered entity in the ordinary course of trader business manufactures and sells beer products. Thus, the sale of beer is subject to VAT. In the course of its production, carbon dioxide is one of the byproducts okay, in the production process of beer, which it likewise sells to another entity. No? So, dito, the ordinary course of trader business of Beer na Beer na ko, Inc. is to sell beer, but the sale of carbon dioxide will be considered a transaction incidental to the main line of business because it is a natural result of the production process. So, since it is an incidental transaction to the ordinary course of trader business, it will likewise be subject to VAT. Okay. This is also why, as a rule, the BIR would normally impose VAT also on other operating income, no? not just our sales revenues or the gross receipts with regard to sale of services. Okay. Now, one-time transactions or isolated transactions may also be subject to VAT. No? Uh, ito, in this particular case of Mindanao Geothermal, dito kinlarify. Kasi dati, the idea is that masasubject lang or consider lang as incidental transaction ito if it is done in the ordinary course of the, or incidental uh, to the main line of business. No? Dito kasi sa kasong ito, si Mindanao Geothermal, Okay, as the name suggests, no, is engaged in the business of producing and distributing electricity. Okay, electricity ang kanilang uh, binibenta in the ordinary course of trade or business. No? But uh, it filed eventually for a VAT refund of its unutilized or unused input tax credits related to its zero-rated sales. Sabi ng BIR, disallow nila, they disallowed a certain portion of the VAT refund claim na supposedly the output VAT which would have resulted in the sale of uh, two fully depreciated vehicles of the company, no? particularly uh, Nissan vehicles. So Mindanao Geothermal claims that their main line of business is electricity. That's why the sale of the fully depreciated vehicles cannot be considered incidental to the sale of, electri sale of electricity and is considered an isolated or a one-time transaction only and should thus not be subject to VAT. Pero ang sabi dito ng Supreme Court, it does not follow that an isolated transaction cannot be an incidental transaction for purposes of VAT liability. No? If we are going to look at Section 105, ang nakalagay lang doon, in the course of trader business includes transactions incidental thereto. Tito, the Supreme Court decided that the sale of the vehicles is considered incidental to the main line of business of Mindanao Geothermal because it was recorded under PPE or property, plant, and equipment. Ano ang nagiging significance nito? It was considered as an asset that is used in business, no? even though not in the main line of business of selling electricity, but it was used in business. So dahil ito ay ordinary asset that was used in business, its sale will be considered as incidental to the operations. No? So kaya lang din natin ito diniscuss para mawala sa isip natin yung idea na dapat normal na byproduct or uh, in line with the normal product production ang nagiging incidental transactions. Hindi. The rule now is that as long as the asset that is being sold is considered ordinary asset, the sale thereof may be subject to VAT. 
as a transaction incidental to the operations of a particular taxpayer. Okay? Now, note, so, <clears throat> note, however, that the incidental transactions would be subject to VAT only when they are incidental to unvatable transaction as well. No? So, kunwari, ang, in the case of uh, Mindanao Geothermal, the sale of electricity is subject to VAT and the sale of the vehicles would then be subject to VAT as well, no? being incidental to the VATable transaction. But if the main line of business of the company is VAT exempt to begin with, then the transactions incidental thereto will likewise be considered as VAT exempt in character. So, kunwari, if, if, if for example, their main line of business is the selling of raw fruits, no? so the sale of raw fruits being uh, agricultural food products in their original state are considered as VAT exempt under Section 109A. So, kung itong uh, taxpayer na ito ay merong delivery truck na kanya fully depreciated na at kanyang dinispose, then the sale will likewise be considered as VAT exempt because it is incidental to a VAT exempt main line of business. Now, on the other hand, if the main line of business is zero rated, dito actually magpo-fall talaga si Geothermal, no? si Mindanao Geothermal, kasi ang kanyang sale of electricity or the distribution of electricity was considered zero rated under uh, a specific law that grants zero rating. No? But the incidental transactions there too may be subject to the 12% VAT, kahit zero rated ang main line of business. Take note that a zero rated transaction is generally subject to VAT. No? Kaya ang treatment dito consistently by the court is that it is a VAT or a taxable transaction. But since the rate applied to it is zero, then it does not result in any output VAT liability but is nevertheless considered a VATable transaction. Okay? So now, we go to the registration requirements related to VAT. There, there are two uh, classifications of registration that will be applicable to VAT. Ito yung tinatawag nating mandatory registration as well as the other one, as we will discuss later, will be optional registration. As the name suggests, persons will be required to register to, for VAT purposes whenever they fall under any of the three classifications here. No? So the first will be if the gross sales or receipts for the past 12 months, other than those that are exempt under Section 109A to AA, have exceeded, exceeded 3 million pesos. Then, uh, which before the train was 191,500, then they are required to register for VAT. Magpo-fall then under the category of mandatory registration will be those who have reasonable grounds to believe that in the next 12 months, their gross sales or receipts, other than those exempt under Section 109A to AA, will exceed also 3 million pesos. So, required na rin silang mag-register. With regards radio and television franchises, however, the threshold amount that will apply will be 10 million pesos. So if their sales or receipts rather exceeded three, uh, 10 million pesos in the preceding calendar year, then they will be required to mandatorily register for VAT already. Now, uh, for the persons availing of the 8% flat rate of income tax, if you remember in your tax one, the train law introduced an entirely new tax scheme, no? which we call the 8% flat rate of income tax, which generally applies to individual taxpayers who are engaged in business or in the practice of profession, whose sales or receipts do not exceed 3 million pesos. Okay, So the idea is that, if a person avails of the 8% flat rate of income tax, he is exempt from the 3% other percentage tax, but as clarified also under RR 13-18, no, which is the VAT uh, regulations implementing the train, they are likewise exempt from the payment of the 12% VAT. Well, medyo obvious naman yung part na yun kasi nga, in order to be availing of the 8% flat rate, it means that you are uh, your sales or receipts do not exceed 3 million pesos, which is the same VAT threshold amount that we use. No? However, take note that if a taxpayer initially availed of the 8% flat rate no, uh, during the first quarter of the year, but... 
sorry. The eventual sales during the year exceeded 3 million pesos. Then, unang-una, magiging disqualified na siya from availing of the 8% flat rate. Pero ano magyayari with regards to his VAT liability? No? He will be liable to the VAT under RR 13-18 prospectively lang. No? Starting the next month when his sales exceeded 3 million pesos and shall be required to update uh, his registration on or before the last day of the said month. So, let's take an example para ma-visualize natin yung part na yan. So, ito yung example mismo na binigay ng BIR in the Revenue Regulations. So, Mr. JMLH signified his intention to be taxed at 8% income tax in lieu of the graduated income tax rates in his first quarter income tax return. So, however, his gross sales or receipts during the taxable year exceeded the VAT threshold as follows. So, 2.25 2.25 million of financial sales for January to September or the first three quarters. On October, naging 3.25 million na ang kanyang aggregate sales. No? So, dito tayo, October will be the month that he exceeded the 3 million threshold. So, ano ngayon na mangyayari sa kanya for VAT purposes? So, Mr. JMLA, sabi natin for income tax will be disqualified to avail of the 8% flat rate anymore because nag-exceed na nga ang kanyang uh, gross sales no, to the threshold amount of 3 million. For business tax purposes, however, he will be subject to the 12% VAT kasi nga nag-exceed na ng 3 million. Pero sabi natin earlier, prospectively, beginning the month after his sales exceeded the threshold. So, since October... Uh, nag-exceed ng threshold na naging 3.25 million November pa magiging liable itong si Mr. JMLH for VAT or for the 12% VAT. He will likewise be uh, required to register or update his registration from non-VAT to VAT on, on or before the last day of that particular month which is November 30. So, all other taxpayers who will not fall within the category of mandatory registration will can optionally avail of uh, VAT registration. Okay? Now, the idea is that if your sales or receipts do not exceed 3 million, excluding those which are exempt, they are not required to register for VAT but may optionally avail if they want to, to be VAT registered. And once they elect such registration or optional registration, it will be applicable to them for the next three years because under the law, they cannot cancel the VAT registration in the next three years. Kung kunwari, uh, the sales or receipts do not exceed 3 million pesos and they availed of the optional VAT registration, they will still be paying 12% VAT on their sales or receipts. And they can likewise claim the input tax no, and apply the tax credit method. But if in the following year, napansin nila na mas mababa pala sana yung pabayaran nilang tax kung nag 3% other percentage tax na lang sila, hindi pa nila pwedeng baguhin yung registration from uh, VAT to non-VAT until the 3-year period expires. Okay. Take note also that persons, individual taxpayers who are availing of the 8% flat rate are also not allowed to avail of the optional VAT registration. Okay. Now, on the other hand, the radio and television franchises whose sales or, or the receipts rather do not exceed 10 million pesos can also optionally avail of VAT registration. Ang pinagkaiba lang with number one is that sa number one, three years lang required yung kanilang VAT registration. But in radio and television franchises, it can no longer be cancelled. Kaya nga sinasabi natin, dito merong forever. Kasi once they avail of the optional VAT registration, forever na silang VAT registered. Okay? Now, we have, uh, we have already uh, been pointing out that in determining mandatory registration, we always uh, mention that... Uh, hindi kasale no? or uh, will be comprised the sales or receipts to determine uh, the 3 million threshold for VAT registration purposes will exclude uh, those which are exempt under Section 109A to AA. Okay, let's take this illustration as an example. So, for example, ABC Company had the following sales for the taxable year 2019. They have sale of fresh fruits, 
of 2.5 million pesos and sale of fruit jams for 2 million pesos. In the question here would be, is ABC company required to mandatorily register for VAT? And the answer will be, of course, no. Because the sale of fresh fruits is considered exempt being an agricultural food product in its original state under Section 109A. Okay. At dahil ito ay exempt under Section 109A, hindi siya sinasali in determining the amount for purposes of mandatory registration. Kaya, uh, in determining whether ABC company is required to mandatorily register for VAT, we only consider the 2 million pesos which are not exempt under Section 109A to AA. Considering, however, that the amount does not exceed the threshold of 3 million pesos, ABC company is not mandatorily required to register for VAT. But, as we mentioned earlier, he can nevertheless avail of, or it rather, can avail nevertheless of the optional VAT registration. So, what will be the effects of registration in a summary? Yeah, registration will not affect the liability for output VAT. Take note that as long as the sales or receipts exceed 3 million pesos, magkakaroon pa rin ng liability for VAT kahit hindi siya nag-register for VAT. Except, as we mentioned earlier, those availing of the 8% flat rate of income tax because the liability for VAT will be beginning the month after the sales or receipts exceeded the 3 million pesos. On the other hand, registration will be necessary uh, because it will authorize the taxpayer to transfer the burden of the VAT to its customers as well as authorize him to claim input taxes as tax credit applying the tax credit method. Which means under number 2 and number 3, kung ikaw ay hindi VAT registered and your sales exceeded 3 billion, magiging liable ka pa rin sa output VAT because it exceeded 3 million but you cannot pass on the VAT to the customers and you cannot also claim any input taxes because of your failure to register. Alright? Now, the VAT returns. So, ito na ang ating last topic for VAT as, uh, as we mentioned earlier. No? Hanggang dito lang ang ating cover the administrative aspects of VAT because it will not be covered by other professors anymore. So, there are, there are currently two types of VAT returns that are required to be filed under BIR rules. We have the monthly uh, B, uh, VAT return which is BIR form 2550M okay? and we have the quarterly VAT return, which is BIR form number 2550Q. You know? So, the deadline for the filing and the payment of the VAT for the monthly return will be 20th day following the end of each month. So, if it will cover, for example, the sales or receipts for January, the deadline will be February 20, which is the 20th day following the end of the month. For the first quarter, for the quarterly return, on the other hand, the deadline under the law is 25th day following the close of the taxable quarter. So if it pertains to the first calendar quarter, January to March, the deadline for the filing of the quarterly VAT return will be April 25. Okay? Take note, however, that for purposes of uh, filing the VAT, okay, uh, we do it consolidated per quarter. No? So, kung kunwari, the first two months of the quarter is January and February, we will file our respective January VAT return on Feb 20 and uh, February VAT return up to March 20. But we don't file a separate monthly return or uh, yes, a monthly return for the March information. We will consolidate the January, February, and March information into one quarterly return. Okay. For EFPS filers, they are normally given an additional 1 to 5 days of each month for their monthly VAT return depending on the industry to which they belong to. You know, industry A would normally be given a 5 days additional uh, period to file and pay the tax uh, applicable. Okay. And uh, industry B, 4 days. Industry C, 3 days. Industry D, two days, and industry E, one day additional. Okay? But in all cases, the filing or the payment, rather, of uh, the applicable VAT payable will be 2050 following the end of each month. Unlike for quarterly returns, pareho lang ang deadline whether you are an EFPS or a non-EFPS filer. Take note, however, that under the train, Okay, it amended Section 114A, 114A, yes. Beginning January 1, 2023, the filing of the VAT return will be on a quarterly basis only. No? Wala ng monthly returns na fina-file. 
Aside from that, the returns, we are also required to provide the BIR with informational returns or uh, lists. So, mag apply dito yung tinatawag natin summary alphabetical list of withholding agents, okay, or what we call uh, the South, which will be filed together with the 2550Q and the 2550M. Now, although ito, uh, e-filing na rin in a way because the requirement now of the BIR is to email uh, the South and hindi na required na mag-submit ng hard copy to the particular revenue district office. On the other hand, required din tayo na gumawa ng mga lists na tinatawag which we call the summary list of sales or the SLS, summary list of purchases which is the SLP and summary list of importations which is SLI. As the name suggests, it is a mere summary of all the sales, purchases, and importations, whether they are VATable, VAT exempt, or zero rated for that matter, which is also required to be filed together with BIR Form 2550Q and submitted via e-submission to the BIR. So that's it for VAT or the value added tax. We mentioned earlier that the uh, other aspects of VAT will be covered by a different lecturer and other percentage taxes as a topic will also be covered by a separate lecture, by a different lecture. At this point, however, we will cover excise taxes in general as well you know, because it is not part of any of the distribution of topics that were given to the other professors. Okay. So by definition, excise tax is sometimes referred to as sin taxes. The purpose of imposing the excise tax on certain articles, products, or even now services will be either to promote health, kaya meron tayong tinatag na excise tax on tobacco sa mga sigarilyo and alcohol sa mga alak, or to discourage purchase of certain articles uh, such as non-essential uh, products like automobiles, petroleum products, or non-essential goods. No? Sama dyan yung mga pabango and other items that may be imported into the Philippines. Or to protect the environment. So, excise taxes are imposed on uh, minerals as well as uh, extraction of petroleum products. As we mentioned also earlier, even though VAT or percentage tax may be considered as mutually exclusive taxes, the excise tax uh, or there is no exemption for excise tax just because may applicable VAT or percentage tax na. No? In fact, under Section 106, excise tax actually forms part of the gross selling price that will be subject to the 12% VAT or in computing the applicable 3% OPT. <clears throat> now, before the amendment of the trained law, there were basically two transactions only that are subjected to uh, excise tax, no? goods that are manufactured or produced in the Philippines or those which are imported. The train law added for the first time ever that we are now imposing excise taxes on services. Dati lahat, puro sale of goods lang ang merong uh, excise tax. No? So ngayon, as long as the goods are manufactured or produced in the Philippines or imported and they fall within the classification of goods that are subject to excise tax, there will be applicable excise tax. No? And now, as well as non-essential services, which is basically... Uh, applicable only to purely aesthetic or cosmetic invasive procedures. No? So, both cosmetic and invasive at the same time. So, kung curative ito, dahil na-accidente ka, kaya inayos sa mukha mo, nagkaroon ka ng surgery, walang excise tax na mag apply Or kung ito naman ay non-invasive, like for example, nagpa-facial ka lang na mukha, wala na mga operasyong ginawa, wala ring excise tax na mag apply so, the kinds or excise taxes can be classified uh, into two depending on the amount no, or the computation of the excise tax that will be applicable. A specific excise tax will be those that will be imposed on a measurement that is other than value. No? So, it can be either on weight, volume, capacity, or any other physical unit. A good example here will be the applicable excise tax, for example, uh, applicable to cigarettes. No? Kasi ang basis in computing the cigarette is per pack. For cigars, it will be per cigar. No? So, hindi value ang tinitignan but add some other unit of measurement. Ad valorem excise tax, on the other hand, will be those that apply and the basis of computing it is the value itself. No? So, um, well, ano bang pa? Ah, well, a good example here, for example, will be uh, 
alcohol, no? Because there is a certain portion, like for example, for hard liquor, 20% of the selling price is uh, the ad valorem tax that may be applicable to it, no? We call it ad valorem kasi ang basis ng computation is not, uh, is the value, no? Yun ang nagiging basis, which is the net sell price. Now, as, as we mentioned earlier, before the train law, there were actually just six classifications of products that were subjected to excise taxes. Kaya makikita mo dito that the really why we call it sin taxes is because the goal of the government is to discourage consumption of these particular products. No? So, yan yung alcohol, tobacco products, automobiles, petroleum products, non-essential goods, and mineral products. But the train law added also sweetened beverages. No? So, yung mga litro pack ng juice, Okay, but they excluded uh, the three-in-one coffee no? in those sweetened beverages that may be subject to excise tax kasi medyo maraming nagreklamo when they were debating the law. So, sweetened beverages were also included depending on the type of sweetener. So, yung mga soft drinks yan, meron na mga excise tax din. Well, it was also included to promote health or to discourage the consumption of sweetened beverages because of the supposed increase in uh, persons who are uh, diagnosed with diabetes no? and the non-essential services which as we mentioned earlier will cover purely cosmetic invasive procedures okay now when do we pay the excise tax okay for goods that are manufactured or produced before the removal from the place of production so hindi pa ito nabibenta tinatanggal pa lang sa planta babayaran na muna ang excise tax before it is removed from the place of production no kaya nga pag nakikita niyo sa balita na meron yung truck ng San Miguel na case case na red horse ang bitbit niya tumumba sa Enlex masayang masaya ang mga tao no pero bayad na ang excise tax niyan mabenta man ito or hindi because the payment of the excise tax will be done before removal from the place of production for imported goods on the other hand they will be the excise uh, applicable excise tax will be uh, paid before it is removed from customs custody so the idea is that you cannot uh, have it released from customs custody without first paying the applicable excise tax for non-essential services on the other hand binibigyan ng 10 days na deadline after the close of the month when the procedure was performed no? so dito if, for, for example, the procedure was performed in January, the deadline of filing the excise tax return and the payment of the applicable excise tax will be uh, February 10, which is 10 days after the close of the month when the services were performed. Alright? And that's a wrap. Okay? So, thank you for coming to this online lecture and feel free to post any questions or clarifications. And as we mentioned earlier, uh, numerous times for that matter that there will be other lectures so we cover other topics which were not discussed in this lecture and that's it all right so you can post your questions or clarifications and i'll be more than happy to answer them for you god bless everyone and keep safe